Hi, my name is Pakorn. Welcome to my home theater. Hey guys, Tony here, and today I'm going to share with you an awesome home theater all the way from Bangkok, Thailand, belonging to Pakorn and his family. Pakorn, or M as he's known to his inner circle, has been a passionate home theater enthusiast and movie statue collector for a while now, and I can't wait to show you his incredible home theater. Before we get into the video, I want to say that it's been great to meet M and see his room evolve over the last few months since we began chatting about setting up a home theater tour, and I have to say that this is a one-of-a-kind setup with so much attention to detail with things you rarely see in a home theater especially the entry to the lobby with the movie statues and the poster light boxes. So sit back, relax, while I take you through M's home theater, so stay tuned. So M's home theater journey began two years ago with a mission to have a home theater that he could turn up as loud as possible without disturbing his family and neighbors. He did something quite radical and that was to build a house just for his home theater attached to the side of his current home. There are no bedrooms, just a set of steps leading up to a hallway which houses his movie poster lightbox collection which I have to say is very impressive. The light boxes can have the posters changed whenever M feels like it, adding something new which is really convenient. This kind of poster is called US one sheet double sided so that there is no light bleed and keeps it nice and bright. To the left of the hallway there is a home gym which M uses on the daily, but is also used to place some of his movie statues which include his love of DC Justice League, Transformers and Predator. These movie statues are incredibly detailed, some of the best I've ever seen, and make a great addition to the home theater experience. As the room was originally a 6.77 meter by 6.1 meter square, M decided to make the room rectangular, which is better for acoustics. And one of the main things M insisted on with his designer and builder was that he wanted his life-size movie busts inside the theater. He was able to achieve this by making the room narrower and keeping the space along the side of the theater to have his life-size movie bus on display, but also house the AV rack, which has been meticulously set up and cable managed. I'll go over all of the gear in the rack later in the video, but these life-size movie busts are a real feature of the home theater and what a cool way to display them while keeping the theater room itself clutter free. Moving into the room, we have a very cool looking home theater with the original dimensions being 6.77 meters long by 6.1 meters wide and 2.85 meters high with a ton of work done to soundproof the room with rock wall and particle board following the acoustic design and that brought the internal dimensions to 6.4 meters long by 4.7 meters wide. This then allowed M to mount his speakers onto the internal particle board as well as add absorption and diffuser panels at the key reflection points. As M was after a very clean, plain look, part of the design was to install a custom-made fabric panel system which could be removed to access the speakers or the acoustic panels behind it. As the room's foundations and walls are made from concrete, combined with the additional layers of rock wool and acoustic panels, M tells me that there is complete sound containment, meaning he can crank the volume as much as he likes without any complaints from his wife or neighbors. The room design was over 100 pages of diagrams and acoustic measurements to make sure that everything was done to specification. Even the ceiling is treated with acoustic material and fabric panels where possible. Another really interesting feature to the room is the main entry door to the theater. This has several acoustic layers to it and forms a soundproof seal when closed. Moving to the seats, there are two rows of custom made to measure seating in bright red leather. M was after a specific look for his room and wanted a red and black theme. There aren't any cup holders or LED lights in the seats as he doesn't like to bring food into the room while he's watching a movie. The riser was made to measure, having a single step up to the back row, with base traps designed and installed inside the riser and the corners of the room to prevent base from collecting and resonating. 
M's designer even measured his height to make sure that the people behind him could see the whole screen over his head when it came to designing the riser. The flooring is something that we discussed during our interview as it's not common to see a hard surface in a theatre room, however being in a tropical country, carpet is just not a thing. And while it could just be considered a reflective surface, there is a lot of acoustic treatment in the room and the floor was considered as part of the acoustic design. M assures me that the room is echo free but does have a little bit of life to it. When it comes to lighting, M was determined to do without RGB because he wanted to keep the theme of the room black and red. The LED lighting is just plain white down lights and LED strips around the room and the riser. The red lines you see along the side and the back walls of the room is actually red fabric with a red LED strip running behind it. When it comes to smart controls, he wasn't interested in having anything for that, simply utilizing the remotes provided, but also having access to the lighting controls using physical switches from the main seated position. This is really interesting to me, and it's actually cool to see such a modern design with analog controls. So if you like what you're seeing so far, why not take a moment to hit that like button and show your support. M designed the rack to be concealed in the corner of the room, but it's also accessible easily from the front and the back and has been neatly cable managed. Taking a look at the gear starting at the top, we have two Crown XLS 1502 amplifiers for the subwoofers, followed by a surge protector and a power line conditioner. Leaving some space for ventilation, we have a PlayStation 5 and a Zidu UHD 3000 media player for his 4K rips. We then have the Anthem AVM70 processor with the AC Infinity T10 cooling fan on top with three Q5400 amplifiers which are 5 by 400 watts per channel to provide the power to the speakers. We also have an Nvidia Shield for streaming with a 4 bay hard drive docking station as well as a mini DSP 2x4 HD for calibrating his subwoofers. I have to say that this is one of the neatest cable management results for an AV rack that I've ever seen. Moving to the screen, we have a custom acoustic transparent screen, 140 inches, 16x9 aspect, as M likes to watch a lot of 16x9 content like TV shows and also gaming. And this allowed him to get the biggest size screen for his room without compromising when going down to 16x9 aspect. This leads us to the projector of choice, which is the JVC NZ7 laser projector, which means that he is able to achieve incredible black levels that minimize the gray bars that are usually visible on 16x9 screens. You literally cannot see them at all. This is a native 4K projector and the picture looks stunning. M really enjoys watching movies with his family, so let's take a look at some of the demos so that you can judge it for yourself. Moving along to the speakers, we have a 9.2.6 speaker configuration, with all of the speakers being the brand XTZ, which is a Swedish company that offers a 30-day try and buy system, which is a method of selling directly to the customer. M chose these speakers because he's a big fan of Klipsch and BMW, and felt that these were a great mix to price for performance. He did try a few other brands of speakers before settling with the XTZ. For the front LCR, we have the XTZ M8, which is an interesting speaker with dual 8-inch bass drivers and a 6-inch driver array for the mid and high frequencies. M tells me they are quite powerful and precise and effortlessly produce a cinematic experience in his home cinema, coming in at around 2700 a pair. The surrounds are hidden inside the fabric wall panels and are the XTZ95.22, of which there are 6 in total, with side, rear surrounds and front wides. They have a 5.5 inch mid bass driver with a ribbon tweeter and are positioned to give an excellent sound bubble in the main listening position as well as the second row of seats. For the overhead speakers and Atmos effects, we have the XTZ S2, which are bolted to the ceiling and aimed down towards the seated area. Being quite high up gives them a great amount of channel separation for object based movie tracks, and M is really happy with his choices and the experience that he gets from them. These come in at $450 per speaker and have a unique cabinet design which allows them to be mounted and aimed in any direction. The subwoofers of choice are the Aurea 18, 
which are a passive sub powered by the crown amplifiers I showed you earlier. M loves these subs and tells me he chose these after extensive testing as he tried other subs in the past like SVS SB4000 and these two subs beat them for powerful bass and tactile response in the main seat. As they are passive subs, he was able to have a thinner profile and put them between the screen and the wall so that it suited the room build as well. They are calibrated with the Mini DSP to give the best tactile bass response in the seated position. Well guys, what did you think of M's room? Why not show him some love by dropping a like on the video for him? M spent a lot of time and effort to create a home theatre to his exact taste and I have to say this is one of the coolest home theatres that I've had the pleasure of making into a tour which I do to give inspiration to the community. If you're interested in anything in the video make sure you check the links down in the description and if you have any questions at all for M or myself let me know down in the comments section. I will have more room tours coming very soon including a full breakdown of my newly constructed home theatre so make sure you subscribe to the channel and tick the bell so that you don't miss it. Anyway guys, a very big thank you for watching, I appreciate your time, and you'll catch me in the next video. Bye for now.